Why am I coming here today? Uh, I was thinking about what I should say. And uh, I realized something that uh, India, Indian culture, Indian society, Indian political system is having its watershed moment. Okay. There are a lot of changes coming in place. And change always comes through turbulence. Let's take an example of a brass statue that we make. What we do is we melt the brass and we put it into a cast. In its molten form, uh, there are a lot of ripples, it's unstable. But when it settles down, when it cools, we, uh, we can give it any structure. We can form really beautiful statues out of it. Similarly, our society, India as a whole, is going through that change, through that transition phase. And if we want to give it a structure, today uh, we are structuring our nation as to who we are going to be in the uh, next century to come and who are we aim to be. And for that change, we need that change. Because what is talked about, it uh, weeds out the weak, weakness out of the system and creates uh, something new. Similarly, political instability, what it does is it gives the people a chance to empower themselves what, that, like what we, we have been seeing for the past two years that uh, free democracy has taken its place, rightful place in the Indian political system. People are being empowered and the mainstream political parties have been forced to think and in some cases act differently. If, uh, the mainstream political parties are now trying to appeal beyond caste and class division. But with our forming the government at the daily in a big way and announcing to contest 400 Lok Sabha seats in the upcoming general election, again an uncertainty has come as our forces to be an alternative to both Congress and the BJP, which is the main agenda of a corrupt free India. This is impacting the way India A and the foreign investors are looking at India's future because they are not sure what would be the future of the investment as has been seen in cases like what we try to say. The government is willing to bring it in, but the opposition are not in favour of it. Therefore, it is very difficult for companies to invest in it until they know which government would be formed at the centre after the election and who would be their ally. The same is happening with SDI in insurance and pension funds. This is one of the reasons why SNP recently had cautioned that a hum parliament would lead to a downgrading of credit rating for India. Now coming to coalition government, coalition government has always been uncertain about the future. It is in cases of such coalitions we see a party having 20 to 30 seats dictating a party having 150 plus seats. In the 90s, we saw four general elections and six prime ministers. This led to political uncertainty and instability arising out of the multiplicity of regional political parties and the need to form coalition governments. Even though the last three governments have been stable, economic reforms have been slow. Although all political parties tend to push for sustained economic reform and growth, in reality, governments are again and again obliged to dilute the reforms to keep coalition partners on board. Of late, UPA 1 and UPA 2 experienced the same. In case of UPA 1, it was the left front which withdrew support in September 2008 on the issue of Indo US nuclear deal. I wish all of you a very happy Republic Day. Well, I strongly believe that political uncertainty in India is a bane for the nation. The reason being, the economic progress of any nation is strongly tied to its political scenario. First of all, let me briefly explain as to what is the cause of this uncertainty. Well, India is going to witness its 16th general election in the coming months of April and May. There is a widespread speculation that the result is going to be a hung parliament. Now let me explain as to how this uncertainty is going to affect the well-being of the nation. First of all, political instability discourages FDI in the country. In the annual meeting of 2014 World Economic Forum, investors have stated that after 
comprehension of the factual mandate in the upcoming general election. Even Adi Corporate and Raghuram Raji have stated that if India wants to improve the investment scenario, the political stability is the need of the hour. Let us take a look at some of the other ways in which political instability has taken its toll. The free trade agreement between India and the European Union has been postponed to 2015, although it started way back in 2007. Taking all these factors into consideration, we can say that political instability is going to lower the growth rate of GDP of our country. Well, when a political party is unable to achieve the magic number of 272 seats, it is going to persuade the regional party in order to form a coalition. Well, such an alliance is going to be only opportunistic in nature. It is not going to share the common goal of national development. For example, there might be pressure for creation of new states. One of such examples is the pressure for creation of borderland in Assam. Now, political instability also creates policy paralysis. The Company Act has been passed in the year 2013 in Parliament. However, there are many rules within it which have not yet been formed. My name is Ankita Singh and I am here to say that political uncertainty in India is a way. Karmane Vadi Karakse, Ma Kaleshu Kadakar. The words I spoke are from a scripture that most of us have grown up listening to. The Bhagavad Gita exhorts us to act without worrying about what lies ahead. Steve Jobs said that we have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in the future. But what if we are not sure about the present we live in? What if the present itself is not in our control? What if our actions are dictated by rules that change from minute to minute, second to second, and from one hour to the next? Political uncertainty, ladies and gentlemen, is all of this and much more. It is when one has no idea as to which rules are written, which rules are broken, and which rules are to be followed. Jonathan Swift once said, For any reason, all governments, without the consent of the government, is the very definition of slavery. Political uncertainty is when the government, elected without consent, abdicates governments. And we are left to the mercy of half panchayat, kangaroo governments, and law ministers who do nothing before taking the law in their own hands and making a mockery of law itself. My friend here would say, and one of the friends with me this day, that uncertainty is the refuge of hope. Indeed, Yada Yada Ki Dharmasya, Gyanat Bhavati Bharat, Abhir Thami Madharmasya, Adat Manam Srijanam. But my friends forget, there is just one Lord Krishna. And not everyone can be Lord Krishna. In conclusion, I will reiterate that political uncertainty is a pain because the world's largest democracy shouldn't live in fear. Because some wise men sat together and wrote the constitution 65 years ago that makes it possible for me to stand before you and speak. There is far too serious a concern to be left to the politicians. So here is we are discussing politics. Uh, good morning, Honorable Judges, respected teachers, and now dear friends. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, congratulate all of my uh, fellow participants who put forward wonderful points. Uh, and I would like to welcome this opportunity to put forth my argument. Uh, India as a country is characterized by political instability. Political instability is used to describe political turmoil or unrest. Uh, this is characterized by a loss of control of the territory. Uh, inability to provide public service and erosion of legitimate authority. Government, as we see, is busy with selling its own coffers. Uh, indulgence, licentiousness, corruption, and debauchery prevail all over the country. Now, Khap panchayats have made life miserable and hell for women. Law and order is in shambles. Uh, the government, and now we see government by a single party, is not possible anymore. The latest style that we see. Uh, is the CM of Delhi, he himself has to sit, sit on a dharna to get, uh, the, uh, to get the law passed. So imagine the plight of the citizens of the country. How, how do they wish to get their demands fulfilled? Now the, the judiciary, one of the most important organs, it has to resort to judicial activism to maintain justice. But can, uh, can we expect this one organ functioning and the other not even doing a little bit uh, to make the country um, 
it will help, uh, it will just lead to paralysis of the whole system. Uh, other impacts could be decrease in FDI, decrease in production levels, uh, endowment to infrastructure, and policy paralysis and the like. Uh, the leaders, they believe it's playing the power game. Uh, key leaders in the, in the party, in the uh, house, are acting like domestic terrorists. Okay. Where it warm and uh, very bright morning. And what has been our auspicious day of 26th January? When we are here and to debate about the political instability, the politics. My dear friends, I am very much enlightened by your thoughts and views and really came so much. Uh, first of all, I want to just say that our country, India, was never been politically stable. You know, from Harappa culture to Aryans and then Guptas, Homes, Mongols and Mughals and Britishers. When was our country was in civil condition? Our country was never been in civil. But still, what we have in the country, India, right now, is not because of the politics, but because of its people. The people what makes the country, not politics. Our country, what it has reached because of the part of the people. Vivekananda once said, it is desh ke logo ka aap vishwas mar jata hai, but desh mar jata hai. Our country has never lost hope and confidence in its people. Politics is made by the people. And when people make loss, when people lost faith, then only it happens a political instability. Some of my friends were saying about the uh, recent advancement in politics that this particular uh, political government came and they have not supported that. This is not because of the political instability, this is because the people have lost in faith in politics and one party, so they have given mandate to different parties and because of that is the result of the political instability. So friends, the people are most important, the people who have the power and who has the politics. Politics is just one factor, there are so many factors which cross the point. And really I'd like to say that thank you very much to give an opportunity to get you your thoughts. Thank you very much.